Hi there, and welcome to video number six. Uh, today we start unit number five, which is the formation of the Canadian Federation. So in this unit, we're going to look uh, at the years 1850 all the way up until 1929, and we cover a number of different topics, which of course includes the establishment of Canada as its own federation. But before we get into that, uh, we're just going to talk a little bit today about responsible government and the establishment of it in 1848. So today's essential question is, what factors led to the establishment of responsible government in United Canada in 1848? In order to show me that you can answer that essential question, you must be able to identify the key members of the political alliances in United Canada. You must be able to explain how the abandonment of protectionist policy granted more political autonomy to the British colony. And finally, you must be able to explain the structure in government in United Canada in 1848. So today we start talking about a new topic. I hope you enjoy the video, and let's get started. Okay, so let's look to answer uh, our essential question by talking about some of the factors that would eventually lead to responsible government. Okay, so two gentlemen, uh, Baldwin, excuse my writing, and Lafontaine, were two political leaders who in 1841 decided to join forces and form an alliance. An alliance means that they agreed to work together. So Baldwin was the leader in Canada West. Lafontaine was the leader in Canada East of the uh, English and French reformers, so the ones who wanted change in government. So the, together, uh, they decided... Uh, to put their sort of their interests together, and they promised to support one another uh, concerning certain things. One of the areas they decided to support each other was that the French uh, agreed that they would support their English Canadian colleagues with economic issues. In exchange, the English Canadian reformers uh, pledged to cooperate uh, in the goal of protecting French language and French Canadian culture in Canada East. So this was called the Baldwin Lafontaine Alliance. All right. Um, so if you are looking for a reason why the English and French decided to work together, really, they felt that combining their, combining their efforts and their power, combining their efforts would help them get responsible... government. So that's why they joined forces. And in doing so, they ended up protecting each other. I apologize for my writing. All right. So while the French Canadian and English Canadian reformers um, were joining forces to demand responsible government, the British Parliament was debating Great Britain's economic policy regarding its North American colonies. So basically, uh, since the early 19th century, the early 1800s, Great Britain, which of course is the mother country, had always practiced a policy that was called protectionism. And protectionism was an economic policy that favored the purchase of raw materials uh, from the colonies only. And what they did was they would impose like duties and taxes on materials that were imported from outside of the British Empire. So if they wanted to import something that wasn't from the colony, it would cost them more money. However, some members in the British Parliament in the mother country believed that this policy was actually a bad thing for British merchants who had to pay higher prices for certain raw materials that they could have otherwise bought for a better price elsewhere in the world had there not been any duties. So, all that being said, uh, protectionist policy gets abandoned in 1846. The British government decides, nope, uh, we're going to abandon this. And now, suddenly, the colony is going to have to uh, compete with the rest of the world for, British, for the British marketplace. So now what you have, basically, is you have the colony and you've got the rest of the world. So you've got two groups here who are both fighting for the British marketplace which was bad for the colony because it now meant that the colony was going to have to compete with everybody else uh, to ensure that it made money, which wasn't good. Um, in fact, uh, merchants living in the colony 
reacted very strongly to the loss of Great Britain's protectionist policy, which had obviously been a huge advantage to them. Um, just on a side note, people were so upset that protectionism was ab um, abolished or abandoned that they actually uh, started talking about annexing Canada to the United States, uh, meaning like getting rid of Canada and and like annexing, basically becoming part of the states in hope that it would access like a huge market uh, to improve its profits. Okay, so the fact that Baldwin, Lafontaine got together and formed an alliance helped responsible government, but also the fact that the colony was no longer protected economically by Great Britain with the economic policy of protectionism, those two things together uh, led many people to start uh, sort of demanding more for responsible government. In fact, Great Britain's decision to end its protectionist policy meant that the colony had to take charge of its own economic affairs in order to prosper, and it also kind of implied uh, that they were going to be given a little bit more of political independence from Great Britain, okay? Okay, so, 1848. Um, in... The 1848 elections, uh, all those reformers under Baldwin and Lafontaine won the majority of the seats in the Legislative Assembly. So in that same year, uh, Great Britain granted responsible government to United Canada. So they finally got responsible government. Uh, the new governor at that time, Lord Elgin, asked Baldwin and Lafontaine to form the Executive Council. So this now meant that the Ho House of Assembly, which is really the Legislative Assembly could now, or was, now had the right to sort of, it, it was the one who elected the members. The cabinet of ministers is really just the executive council, guys. Okay, so nothing's changed. This is still the executive council here. But now it, it elected them in, okay? And basically, this body, this executive council right here, right, uh, it, it, introduced bills to the Legislative Assembly, and it really approved bills that were passed there. So in theory, they could still reject bills that would be brought to them from the Legislative Assembly, from the House of Assembly, but they really just approved them most of the time. The Legislative Council, which was still there, as a general rule, they approved laws for the majority of the time. But the really interesting thing was this. The governor now, who's above, uh, was required to act on the Executive Council's recommendations. So the Executive Council would bring recommendations to the governor, and he was required to listen to them. But he could still uh, reject them. He had the power to reject them. Uh, however, it was rare that he did. So this was now a uh, responsible government where you had people like the Governor General who ha actually had to listen to the Executive Council, which was actually elected in by the Legislative Assembly. So finally, the population in Canada does have a pretty good say in how things are being run. This was finally a success uh, after years and years and years uh, of fighting for responsible government. Okay, so that wraps up video number six in our new unit, the formation of the Canadian Federation. Uh, before going, let's just be reminded of the essential question for today's lesson, which was, what factors led to the establishment of responsible government in United Canada in 1848? And let's be reminded of our success criteria. So to answer that question, you must be able to identify the key members of the political alliances in United Canada. You must be able to explain how the abandonment of protectionist policy uh, gave more political autonomy to the British colony. And finally, you must be able to explain uh, the structure in government in United Canada in 1848. Thank you for watching today's video, and have a great day.